good day everyone so we are now on week 7 of your journey to general mathematics from here on we will be touching the basics of business math and we will start this by the discussion of interests i know that you would already face this during your grade school and junior high school days so i am expecting that this will be a piece of cake for you but before that take a look on the objectives for this week and the content of this video <music> Umpisahan natin yan sa pag-alam kung ano nga ba ang interest. Ang interest ay defined as the cost of borrowing a money. So, ibig sabihin, yung interest magsisilpi siyang extra payment dahil dun sa service na binigay nung paghiram ng pera. Kasi bilang isang negosyante na magpapahiram ng pera, hindi pa pwedeng matenga ang pera sa iyo. Sa so, kailangan yan, kumikita yan habang dumadaan yung panahon. So, ang mekanismo ng isang interest ganito, alimbawa, nagkaroon ka ng application sa isang home credit service ng isang certain gadget, alimbawa nga ay cell phone. So, napag-usapan ninyo nung iyong inutangan, kasi home credit yan, na 3 months babayaran mo yung iyong gadget. So, pagtapos ng 3 months, pagdating ng araw ng bayaran, you will pay for the original price of the gadget and the additional price which is called interest. So, ayan yung magiging bayarin after 3 months. So, meron kang original price plus yung dagdag na presyo dahil nga natin ga sa'yo yung pera na dapat nilang kikitain in 3 months. So, meron tayong dalawang uri ng interest, tinatawag itong simple at compound. So, ang pagkakaiba ng dalawang yan, kapag simple, yung interest rate is not changing. Kasi yung pera na hihiramin mo, magkakaroon niya ng porsyento. So, yun yung tataas, yun yung idadagdag sa babayaran mo. So, kapag ka simple yan, hindi nagbabago yung porsyento ng pera na hiniram mo. Yun yung interest rate. Pero kapag compound, nagbabago yan every given period. Pag sinabing period, ito yung set of time kung saan nagbabago yung interest rate. Halimbawa, monthly, annually, or yearly, or quarterly. So, ibig sabihin kung monthly, every month nagbabago yung rate. Nagtataas ng nagtataas yung interest rate every month. So, ganun yung compound dumadagdag ng dumadagdag. Kapag simple, hanggang sa matapos yung oras ng iyong pagbayad, iisa lang yung interest rate. So, punta naman tayo sa pagsisolve ng interest. Sa video na to, simple muna yung ating isosolve. Siyempre, pag magsisolve ka ng simple interest or any interest problems, you must always understand first what are the formulas being used for this type of problems. So, unang formula dyan ay ang I is equal to PRT. Sa ibang libro, ginagamit nila yan on magic triangle. Pero, since you are senior high school ngayon, mas maiging intindihin nyo lang yung mismong formula. So, ang ating I dito ay tinatawag na interest o yung dagdag doon sa inutang na pera. P is the principal or starting amount o yung perang hiniram kung magkano. R is the interest rate or yung porsyento kung papaano dadagdag yung ating interest. Ang T is the time frame. So, we have important notes before solving simple interest. Una, you must always transform the interest rate to decimal form. So, you will move two decimal places to the left. Ibig sabihin, kung 2% yung iyong interest rate, imamove mo muna yung decimal places niya dalawang beses papuntang kaliwa para maging 0.02. So, mamaya makikita nyo naman kung paano yan isosolve. Another one, if the time frame is different from the interest time, 
you must always multiply the total time frame to the mode on how the interest grows. Halimbawa, meron tayong 3 years total time. Ito yung total time frame. Ibig sabihin, babayaran natin ang pera after 3 years. Pero meron lang siyang monthly interest. So, magkaiba yung ating time frame doon sa interest growth o yung mode on how the interest grows. That will be 3 years times in every 1 year, there is 12 months. So, meron tayong 12 months over 1 year. Ngayon, ba't nasa baba yung year? Kasi kailangan nating ma-cancel yung years para maging months. So, that will become 36 months. So, alimbawa, months naman yung ating frame. Tapos, year naman yung ating interest mode. So, babalik ka rin mo lang yung 1 year and months para ma-convert naman yung months into year. Last note, kailangan ninyong malaman na ang cash price or total price is the sum of the principal and the interest. So, ito yung tinatawag din nilang future value. So, FV is equal to I plus P. Meron pang isang formula ginagamit para sa kanya which is FV is equal to P times 1 plus RT. So, depende kahit anong formula ang gusto nyong gamitin, depende yan sa situation ng problem. Kung pwede mong magamit yung F, V is equal to I plus P, gamitin mo siya. Pero, may mga pagkakataon kasi na yung problems ay mas gustong gamitin yung pangalawa. So, later on, malalaman ninyo kung paano mapipili yung tamang formula. So, start tayo sa sample problem number 1. Mrs. Aquino borrowed money amounting 4,500 pesos to a friend and agreed to pay the money with a monthly 2% simple interest. How much will she pay if they both agreed to pay the amount after 6 months? So, pag magsisolve ka ng mga gantong problems, always list down all the events. We have here principal amount of 4,500 kasi ayun yung hiniram na pera. We also have rate of 2% simple interest. So, 2% and according to my note, kailangan po ninyong i-move the decimal places twice to the left. So, magiging 0.02. So, gumalaw tayo ng dalawang beses papuntang kaliwa. Always do this before solving kasi hindi tayo makakapag-solve kung naka-percent pa siya. We need the decimal form. Next is the time. So, we have 6. Kung mapapansin ninyo, we have same interest time which is monthly and same time frame which is after 6 months. So, wala na tayong problema doon. Therefore, we will use 6 as our letter T. And we're looking for FV kasi magkano daw yung babayaran niya after 6 months. So, yung total na bayarin that is principal plus the interest. Ibig sabihin, yung magkana inutang mo plus yung dagdag na porsyento ay yun yung magiging bayarin mo after time free. So, syempre, pag may FV, kailangan natin yung I. Move tayo sa may solution. Start with finding the I. So, use the formula I is equal to P or T. Substitute all the values. So, we have P as 4,500 or with 0 0.02 and T as 6. So, you can use calculator to solve this and then we will arrive as I equals 540. Now, bakit kailangan si I? Because I is being used for finding FV which is I plus P. So, again, substitute and then solve. So, we have now FV as 5,040. Therefore, Mrs. Aquino will pay after 6 months amounting to 5,040. So, let's move on now to the sample problem number 2. Mr. Torres borrowed money amounting to 65,000 pesos to a bank that gives monthly 0.2% simple interest. 
how much will he pay if the due date is after 2 years? So, nang hiram daw si Mr. Torres ng pera, 65,000 pesos sa isang banko. Tapos, ang interest nun ay 0.2%. Simple lang. So, magkano daw yung kanyang babayaran after 2 years? So, may time frame tayong 2 years. So, list down the given. First is the principal money which is 65,000 pesos and the rate of 0.2%. So, kailangan i-transform yan into decimal. So, move two decimal places to the left that will become 0.002. Next is the time frame. So, we have here two years pero magkaiba kasi yung ating time frame and interest time o yung mode of growth ng ating interest. So, ang ating interest ay monthly gumagalaw pero ang ating time frame ay 2 years. So, we need to convert first the years to months para makapag-solve sa ating sample problem number 2. So, 2 years times 12 months per 1 year. Again, nasa baba yung year para makancel natin yung year ng 2 years. So, that will become just 20 4 months. That's 2 times 12. Next, FV is missing kasi yun nga yung inahanap. How much will he pay? Magkano yung babayaran lahat after 2 years? So, pag sinabing babayaran lahat, future value yun. So, syempre, sa future value, kailangan natin yung I. So, gagawin natin ganito sa solution. Find the I first by using the formula for i and then substitute the values. After substituting the value, you can use calculators to solve this and we will arrive as i is equal to 3,120. Ngayon, na nakita na natin yung i, pwede na natin makuha si fv which is i plus p. So, ang i natin is 3,120 and P of 65,000 therefore ang babayaran ni Mr. Torres after 2 years ay 68,120 Move tayo sa isa pang problem and eto siya So dito hinahanap is the interest rate Given that meron siyang 20,000 pesos na loan at nagbayad siya ng 22,400 after 6 months. So, list down the given para ma-break down yung problem. Umutang siya ng 20,000. That's P. We are looking for the rate. Meron tayong time frame of 6 months. Since parehas yung ating growth of interest and time frame, therefore, we will use 6. FV as 22,400. And we need I. Well, in some cases, we don't need I anymore kasi nga may formula pwedeng gamitin na walang I. For the solution, we will use this formula. Papansin nyo, wala na siyang I. So, we don't need I anymore. But still, we can solve for R. Substitute the given. And then simplify. So, 20,000 times 1 is 20,000. Distribute nyo yan. 20,000 times 6 is 120,000. And then, copy R. Simplify. Transpose yung 20,000 And then simplify ulit And then just divide Both sides by 120,000 Cancel this one And then we will have R is equal to 0 0.02 You can transform this into percentage form By moving naman to the right That will become 2 per cent So this will be our answer and that's how you solve simple interest problems.